Hey, I'm Sam from Burn2, and today I want to talk to you about the only plugin you'll ever need to list documents in a searchable library on your WordPress site. Ever since we launched it in 2021, this plugin has been one of our best sellers here at Barn2, and with good reason. Customers love how this plugin makes it easy to add, organize, and list all kinds of files in a library that visitors can see, filter, search, and download directly from your site. The plugin I'm referring to is of course Document Library Pro, and today I'm going to give you a complete walkthrough beginning with installation and setup, then I'll show you how to add your own files and personalize the way that it looks and functions. And here's a look at the demo that you can find for yourself with the first link in the description. You'll have the option to choose between a front-end demo and an admin demo, which launches an editable demo with admin access. Let's view the front-end demo. First up, we have our table view. Now this lists all of the documents in a table format with links to download the files on the right-hand side here. It also includes a search bar and filters for categories, tags, or any other custom filters that you create. You can see here, it's also useful for listing audio and video files or linking to external files if you don't have them hosted on your website. Further down, you can see the folder view, which still has the same list of documents, but here it's listed as separate folders, which makes searching and filtering through a little bit easier and more navigable. An alternative way of listing documents is using this grid format. And we'll talk about the different ways to configure the plugin later on, or you can just go for a simplified grid with icons instead of images. This plugin is really useful for corporate documents, such as company handbooks, data sets, and documentation. It's also ideal for personal documents like leisure guides or recipes. And it's an excellent tool for creating an audio or video library for things like podcasts and YouTube playlists. As a premium plugin, you do need to purchase a copy from our website in order to be able to use it on your site. We do offer a light free version, but that's not what I'm going to be covering in this video. So if you want to follow along, you'll have to get yourself a copy. It is covered by our 30 day money back guarantee. So there's no risk to just giving it a go. After purchasing your copy, you'll get an email with the zip file and a product key for activation. In the WordPress admin, go to plugins and click on add new, then click on this upload plugin button and choose the file from your computer or drag and drop it down here. Click install. And when that's ready, you can click on activate plugin. Now you can see a new documents tab has been added here. Let's go to settings and click on the setup wizard here. So we can go through all the main settings that we need to. We'll come back to this page and go through the detailed settings later on in the video. The setup wizard may launch automatically, but I just wanted to make sure everybody can find me here on this page. So first of all, you need to copy and paste your license key into this box here and then click activate. Mine is already in there and active. So I'm going to click next. Step two is where you'll choose a layout for smaller libraries. I think that the grid layout is fine, but for anyone with a decent number of files, you'll want to use the table layout. You can also choose the folder system that I showed you in the demo. This is completely optional and entirely up to your preferences. It'll still display all the same documents. You can also keep this checked to allow users to preview the documents in a light box. This is again, just a matter of preference. Next, we need to define the table columns. There are a lot to choose from, which you can read about with this link here, read more. And I think that the default setup is pretty good already. We have a title, content, document category, and the file size, and then a link. If yours does not match this exact thing here, that's okay. I'm sure what you have will be a good place to start. In terms of accessing documents, this is pretty important. So you need to decide whether there's going to be a link to the document, a multi-select checkbox, so people can select multiple documents to download at once, or you can even choose both. And lazy load is something I would only include if you have hundreds of documents and you're worried about load times. So for now, we don't really need to worry about that. Filters make it easier to find what you're looking for. And I recommend choosing the custom 
filter here. And I think you should write categories with a comma and then tags. They're comma separated values. We're going to be touching on categories and tags later on. So once you have those set up for all of your documents, then these filters will apply and be very handy. We're already at the end of the setup wizard, so we can click finish setup and let's click this link to create a document. But I just need to pause for a second and explain what exactly a document is in terms of what WordPress thinks it is. Actually, this plugin is very flexible and really extends the meaning of document to basically any file type. This could include a downloadable file that's stored in the WordPress media library, for example, a PDF, image, or PowerPoint presentation, or any downloadable file that's stored on a third-party platform like Dropbox, Google Drive, Microsoft SharePoint, or Box. It could be a resource that's available for people to read directly on your website without having to download anything, or even a link to a web page, which could be on your site or somewhere else. One more thing before you start adding all of your documents is you need to consider how you're going to organize those documents using the categories and tags that I mentioned earlier. It's really important to plan this sort of structure in your library, just like keeping your files organized on your computer in folders. If you set it up well from the beginning, you're gonna have an easier time keeping things organized down the road, and users will really appreciate the additional features like the filters, which will allow them to find the documents they're looking for in a much faster and easier way. Over on the left here, click on categories, and you can create a new category by just writing the name and the slug, which is the URL friendly version of the name. So take, for example, the categories that I've already created, meetings, and the slug is the lowercase form of it here. And if you make a new category, you have to choose if it's a parent category or if it's going to belong nested underneath another existing category. Let's create a subcategory to live beneath finance and let's call it investments. And it's gonna live underneath finance as a non-parent category. We're gonna add that category now. And you can see here underneath finance, we have investments. Tags you can add ahead of time or you can create them on the fly when you're editing documents. It's really up to you. When you add a tag, you're just going to write the name how it will appear on your site, including the capital letters. And again, the slug is the lowercase version. Tags are most useful when you want to create references for the document. For example, the year, the publisher, topic, type, or something else. It really just depends on what sort of document you have. So now that you have these set up, your document library table can include a column just for categories and tags if you wanted to, as well as those filters that we set up earlier. Now, the next step is obviously to add your own documents to the library. So depending on what you're adding, you have a choice of actually five different ways to do it. Each of these methods will store the information in your media library, as well as in the document section of the WordPress admin. This will also store additional data, which you can choose to display on the front end, along with download links. Feel free to use whichever method you feel will save you the most time. This is going to depend on how many files you have and how much details you want to add to each one. So the first option is we're going to add a document manually. We're going to click on the add new tab on the left here, and you're going to actually write the document into WordPress itself. So this is something where if you don't have an existing document, you're just creating it from scratch. Here with add media, you can add images or other types of files like MP3. And in the paragraph text, you're going to write about the document. An excerpt is just a very short version of the information. And over here on the side, make sure you have this document link section enabled using the screen options. Enable that here. And you can choose a file upload and you can add that file here or a custom URL, which you can paste here. And this is where the document is actually going to be located if you are linking to a document from a third party source. Now, if you scroll down, you can see the document categories that we created earlier. So I can click it to include it in investments. And under tags, I can create different tags for this. So let's call it uh, well, let's just say example tag, okay? 
and then I can click add, and here the tag has been added. File size is something you can modify if you are linking to an external document, but otherwise you do not have to worry about that because WordPress will take care of it for you. You can either save draft or you can immediately publish it. For our second option, we're going to select files directly from the media library, which already exists on our WordPress site. So click on media here, and I would choose to list the media in a table format because that's going to be easier for what we're about to do. Then you can bulk select as many different files as you would like. You could select them all, or you could just select a few and then use this bulk actions menu here. And you're going to go add to document library and click the apply button. And here we go. Two documents have been successfully created. We can view those documents here in our documents and under all documents where everything is going to be listed. Option three involves simply dragging and dropping files from our computer or another source into WordPress directly. You're gonna do that by clicking on import here. And now you can see the files can be dragged and dropped into this area. So I'll just select something here. And now that it's been added, I can also edit that document. And here's the details of the document. I can choose where it goes in terms of categories, tags, and I can write more about the document here. And the final method is a CSV upload. Now you'll have to create a CSV file which matches the sort of syntax and formatting which we've created in our example document, which you can find in our knowledge base. I'm actually using our example CSV right here. And let's click continue. So I'm going to map all of the column names to the fields here. And you can see that they're already set up correctly because this is the example CSV. So if you create a CSV of your own files, then you can just match it to what is in this file. I'm going to run the importer. That's going to import all the files that are in the CSV. And I can view those documents which have been added. And I can see they've been added as a draft here. If you want to make bulk changes, you can select as many documents as you'd like. And under bulk actions, you can choose edit, apply. And here we can change the status to published. And we can also add it to categories or create tags if we want to. The final way to add files is using a front end upload form which can also be used to allow any third party to add files to your document library. This is way more complicated than what I want to cover in this video. And I already made a video about it, which you can find in the cards up here. So check that out. If you want to learn how to create a front end form that allows users to submit documents to your library, no matter what though, be sure to add as many details as you can while you are uploading, adding or creating documents for your library. The more categories and tags you use, the better organized your entire system is going to be and the easier everything is going to be for your users and for yourself later on down the track. Now it's time for the fun bit, seeing your document library for the first time. Go to the pages section in the WordPress dashboard and you can filter by date to get the most recent page. And mine will be document library and you can see here it says document library page. You can actually edit this name to whatever you'd like it to be. But if you don't want to do that or you want to do it later, that's fine. Click on view. And here we have our document library. Now it is programmed to match the theme of your website. I have a very plain default theme. So what it looks like right now is extremely plain and simple, but it should look way better on your website if you have a more tailored theme already set up. But in any case, you can see that the title the content, categories, file size, and links are available, including preview buttons. And all of this is going to be managed in the back end of the plugin where we can modify the settings as needed. Now, if I do want to click on a file, for example, here, it'll actually open up a preview in an entire page. We can actually modify this so it doesn't open up to a separate page if we want to, 
but that's how WordPress has stored the data and it's available in the table right now. And you can see the download links are also buttons here. We can download individual files or we can multi-select different options and download them all at once using this download selected items button up here. So the next step is to simply make sure that you're happy with everything and make any tweaks that you would like to. Let's return to the plugin settings page and let's modify the settings to our liking. To find the settings, go to documents and click on settings. And first we'll look at the general settings tab. I'm gonna scroll down to the document data and we can choose which fields we want to include or exclude by default. Right now we have content, excerpt, and featured image, or we can choose to include the comments, add some of our own custom fields, or the authors. I'm gonna leave them off for now. Here's an interesting one. You can actually change whatever page will be the default document library page. So if you already have a resources page set up, you may want to choose that. Or you can use the default one, which is set up by the plugin, which should be called document library. Or if you renamed it, it'll have that name as well. I did mention the layout before, but I would encourage you to at least try and see what the grid layout looks like for you. So I'm going to do that as well so we can see what it looks like for me. And we'll, we'll enable the folder structure so we can see how our categories look when structured into different folders. I'm going to skim past some of this because it's pretty self-explanatory. If we don't want to link to separate pages for documents, we can uncheck this box. So we won't open additional pages on the website just to show the documents. And finally, at the bottom, here's where we can enable front-end document submission, which again, I've covered in a separate tutorial, which I linked to earlier. It'll also be in the description. Click on Save Changes down the bottom. Now you see the document library has changed quite a bit. We still have the search bar, but because we're in the folder view, we don't have the same category and tag filters on the top. But we can click on each of our different categories and you're gonna see what files pop up in each of those categories. I added one document here to the investments category as an example, and you can see it's here. So that's all right, but if I do want to change how things look within the different tiles or different grid format that we see here, then I can go back to settings and I can click on document grid and this will change what is displayed. So I can also add the file size, the number of downloads made and any other custom fields. Also, I can change this background color, which you saw, save those changes and now there's no color behind this icon. You can also go to document tables tab and edit the table format, which we were using earlier. A lot of this was covered in the setup wizard, so I'll skim past it. But one thing I'll bring to your attention is this design feature. You can leave it default so it'll match your theme, or you can choose custom and you can actually modify the colors and the borders. That's quite a lot to get into and something to play around with. But honestly, I think that the default option is going to be good for 90% of users. And if you have allowed the option for single document pages, then this settings tab just gives you a few customization options for what will be displayed on those pages. Now, I did just disable this option, so not really something to worry about, but I wanted to bring it to your attention as it's actually a new feature that we didn't have in this plugin before. Now, the final thing you should do is go to Appearance and choose Menus. Scroll down and find your Document Library page and add it to your menu. And then you can drag that to live anywhere within your website menus. This is going to make it accessible and easy for users of your site to find. Click Save Menu. And here the document library has been added to our website menu on the home page. You might also be interested in keeping your library private or only accessible with password access. Watch this video next to learn how to set that up. And of course, thanks for watching.